once we figure and it's a false figuration of what's best for us particularly after a breakup or some other trauma we reach out for substances that we can bring into ourselves to ease the pain this is probably a lot of the reason why people are on antidepressants and all this other stuff <coughs> they've consciously decided that that's easier than trying to um, psychologically configure a way out of the trauma bond and the the harm and the hurt and possibly the shame and the guilt of a lost relationship and then um, with these cocktails and that's what it's become today just chemical cocktails one chemical needs the other to um, compensate for the benefits and deficiencies that the other one causes see there's always a side effect you'll get this, the list of side effects of the chemicals on the packet that they put them in there's always a list of the side effects so that the chemical company isn't um, liable for what happens to you so you'll take one tablet and have side effects and then you'll need another tablet to fix the side effects the home addict the home medicator um, the self trasher in the medical realm will take the drug and as it wears off quicker they take more which costs more and does more damage to their mind and their health I'll never forget that show she was a female post-mortem lady doctor someone I forget who she was she was good and they found this body of a woman uh, South American woman young probably about 39 Auntie Betty let's call her Auntie Betty and Auntie Betty was found dead they did this post-mortem on her because they couldn't find out couldn't work out from the outside what was wrong with her on the inside what had caused her to die so suddenly and we'll go this way excuse me viewers we'll go this way please Thank you. Um, and they did the post-mortem and found out she was a closet cocaine addict. A closet cocaine addict. She overdosed. She died from the side effects of cocaine. <clears throat> and of course we can't tell from the outside what's happening on the inside of people and this is where it all comes undone for many so we can't tell when we meet people what is actually going on in their life and what they've done to themselves before you come along I just had a relationship some 12 months ago now with a woman and part of the reason why I ended it wasn't only because of covert emotional incest and the complex abuses that come through that to you um, it was also some habits that she had that she was trying to like, regulate but was unable to became a part of a life for whatever reason her personal reasons but they became so bad at the end I just thought this woman's had a lifetime of this I can't see completely the internal damage that this has done um, and then one night I saw the spirit of death on her 
and figured that, no, I don't want to be around for that. She's going to die before her time. And um, I don't want to go through that. There was other complications, as I said, through the covert emotional incest there that I just couldn't have been bothered with and I just, I pulled the pin. And I can't say that it was disappointing because it was, it was more than disappointing. It was completely heartbreaking, but that was the way it was, that's it. You haven't got time, I thought I worked too hard. <clears throat> I've tried to make the right health choices and everything throughout my life. This person's been able to somehow, to a certain extent, present herself as functioning, but in so many ways she wasn't. Um, and I thought, no, no, I'm not gonna be at the end of this ride and have to clean up this mess, and I got out. The family member that was bunging on the abuse, second party abuse, had a psychological and uh, malignant narcissistic breakdown, which worked out perfectly because then they reunite. They go, I've returned. The outsider is gone. We can continue again. Our internal family, emotional incestual relationship, we can return to that, which we will and they get back on track. That's what the narcissistic collapse usually is within a family member that has had to wrestle or compete with somebody from outside the family who has taken mental and emotional supply from that person. <clears throat> and of course, the narcissistic collapse all works to the advantage of reinstating, reinforcing and reigniting and recalibrating the original emotional connection, illegitimate emotional, abusive emotional connection between those two people, the parent and the child. That's why it's very important for when you break up from one of these people that you make sure with all the determination and spirit you can muster to get yourself well again and have no question about the fact that you're in a situation that wasn't healthy for you, it was never going to be beneficial to you, it was limited usually associated with massive voids of presence. They just become unpresent, both physically and mentally, because they're very split in the way they go about things, including their personal intimate relationship. They're split between the loyalty bind that they have within the emotional and social relationship whilst trying to manage and um, sustain and maintain a relationship with somebody from outside the immediate circle. So when you realize, and you will, through the pain and the trauma, that you're tied up with somebody who is limited. I think that's the most um, gentle way you can say it. They're limited in how they're going to behave and what they're going to do uh, as far as their, can, their part's concerned within the relationship. And this limitedness is abuse. And that abuse will play on you and send you into all sorts of frustrations, aggravations and in the immediate and then we'll move on to deeper forms of consequence in the form of complex traumatic stress disorder or PTSD 
alphabet, whatever those initials are, I can't think right now. You have to decide that that environment didn't work for you. You weren't meant to be there. You gave it a go, they gave it a go. It's now diminished and disintegrated and you never, ever, ever go back.